evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, here in the United States, we've been so deeply engrossed in our own debates over whether men should be allowed to compete on girls' swim teams or whether it's immoral to carry our groceries in plastic bags that we have missed the fact that the government of China has been busy with its own agenda, taking over the world. In the space of just 15 years, for example, the Chinese have succeeded in recolonizing the entire continent of Africa. Didn't think that could happen? Well, it is happening. In Africa, China now calls the shots and takes the natural resources for itself, period. As of tonight, there is only one remaining African country that dares to recognize Taiwan, and it happens to be among the smallest countries in Africa, Swaziland. Everyone else on the continent obeys Beijing. But wait a second, how can this be happening? Isn't colonialism racist and bad? Yes, it is. And no one's worse and more racist than the Chinese. Go on Chinese social media sometime and see how they describe the Africans they've subjugated. It's horrifying. So why isn't the New York Times writing stories about any of this? You know why. Because the New York Times is on China's side. That's why they all but ignore the brutal Chinese colonization of Latin America, which is also in full swing right now. Colonialism violates everything the New York Times once claimed to believe in, but that's okay because they never really believed any of it anyway. It was always about power. We came to Brazil this week to see for ourselves what the Chinese are doing to Latin America. We're making a documentary about it for our Tucker Carlson original series. Brazil has the last pro-American government in Latin America. It's our single most important ally in the Western Hemisphere. Allowing Brazil to become a colony of China would be a significant blow to us and potentially a very serious military threat. The Biden administration appears to be in favor of it. One person who's emphatically not in favor of it is the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. So, of course, the American media hate him. Here's some of their slander. The United States isn't the only country lurching dangerously towards authoritarianism. It is happening all over, indeed. Just yesterday, for example, Brazilians elected Jair Bolsonaro. Usually you don't get rid of an aspiring dictator through the electoral process. Brazil is going to have trouble with Bolsonaro. It's that same authoritarian, like, women-hating, you know, racist energy. He's the Trump of Brazil. President Bolsonaro doesn't believe in social distancing, doesn't want lockdowns, much, much more extreme than President Trump. Brazil's far-right nationalist president, Jair Bolsonaro, spoke at an event in Dallas. These two men and fellow travelers like Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin represent the growing global threat to the ideas of liberalism. These are people whose research consists of three minutes on Wikipedia on the way to the studio. He's a racist. Of course he is. He, quote, doesn't want lockdowns. There's your proof. But it is the last clip from plagiarist Fareed Zakaria that explains why they're so mad at Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro, Fareed Zakaria tells us, represents a, quote, growing global threat to the ideas of liberalism. Liberalism, meaning neoliberalism, meaning globalism. And in fact, that is true. Bolsonaro is no Justin Trudeau. He's not a low IQ fascist who would be working as an Instagram influencer if he doesn't have his own army. He's not the president of Ukraine who shuts down television stations that dare to criticize him and outlaws opposition parties and arms Nazis. In conventional terms, Bolsonaro is in fact liberal. He has done nothing to stop civil liberties in Brazil. But at the same time, he is a nationalist. He cares about his country. He resists China. Therefore, he must be stopped. George Soros hates him, and so does Joe Biden. He's not with the program. So naturally, we wanted to meet him. Yesterday, we did. We sat with Bolsonaro for more than an hour. And the first thing we learned is that the left in Brazil hates him very much. They tried to kill him when he first ran for president four years ago. With very little money and the backing of no party, he came out of nowhere to get 57 million votes. But he almost didn't survive to be elected. He was stabbed by a leftist almost to death at a rally at which point the left funded lawyers to come in and rescue his attempted murderer. <laughs> An amazing story that hasn't gotten a ton of coverage in the United States. He's an authoritarian, says MSNBC. All right. So we asked Bolsonaro about the stabbing in our conversation. We also asked him about his Christian faith, which is on display, something else that triggers them. We asked him about our Supreme Court stance on abortion, his views on gun rights. And we asked him fundamentally, why do you think you're so hated? Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. 
I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.